Today we are cooking swordfish Provençal. If you've ever had a bad experience with tough and dry swordfish, wait till you try this. With a few tricks up your sleeve, you can produce the most succulent dish. I have a lovely swordfish here with a deep burgundy bloodline. If the bloodline is gray-brown, your swordfish has seen some better days. Of course, it will turn gray after cooking, but should be deep red on a raw fish. Other signs of freshness apply to all fish. The flesh should feel slightly damp and the smell should be almost imperceptible. The skin on swordfish is too tough to my liking and I cut it off. If you like it, you're welcome to keep it. As Chef John would say, you are the lord of your sword. Now let's cut the fish into portions. I like to divide my fish right down the bloodline. This way I can remove some of it. It is perfectly fine to eat, but tends to be a tad fishy. I don't dig out every last bit of it, just what's convenient. I have two secrets for juicy swordfish. The first one is to salt it at least an hour before you plan to cook it. If it's more convenient, you can do it up to two days ahead. This works just like brining and helps the protein hold on to its moisture during cooking. Make sure to salt all sides and do this from above for even distribution. And yes, you are welcome to add some black pepper if you want. Let's put our fish on a plate, cover with plastic and put in the fridge. What's the second secret? You'll see. But first, let's make the sauce. Put a couple of tablespoons of olive oil into a pan. Any pot or skillet would work. It doesn't need to be stainless steel. Add one diced yellow onion and a pinch of salt. Cook over medium-low heat until the onion is translucent and tender, 10 to 15 minutes. Don't forget to stir it once in a while for even cooking. Now add two garlic cloves that you minced or put through a garlic press and a few teaspoons of minced fresh sturdy herbs. I'm using rosemary here, but you can also use thyme, sage, oregano, or a mixture of all of those. Stir everything together and cook just until aromatic, about a minute. Add one 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes and three quarters of a cup of dry white wine. The exact measurements are not important. Feel free to eyeball everything. Fresh tomatoes produce an amazing sauce when they're in season, but you'll have to peel and seed them so it's a bit more work. Info on how to do this is on my blog linked below this video. Crank up the heat and bring it all to a boil. Then reduce the heat to medium and cook until the sauce is as thick as you want it to be. There is no right or wrong here. I like mine to get very reduced. The sauce can be prepared up to this point days in advance. So this dish is very convenient for entertaining. Before serving, warm it back up and stir in a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of minced fresh parsley. Don't forget to taste and correct for salt. Now let's cook our fish. Swordfish is one of the few fish types firm enough not to fall apart in a stainless steel pan. If you want to use a non-stick or cast iron pan, that's fine too. Add one tablespoon of grape seed or some other high heat cooking oil and set the pan over high heat. While the pan is heating up, dry the swordfish on paper towels. It's important that it's very dry or it will steam and stick. When the oil is very ripply, place the fish in the pan. It should sizzle on contact. If it doesn't, Remove it immediately and wait for the pan to heat some more. Make sure your pan is large enough to fit all the swordfish pieces in a single layer. Cook the fish without moving or disturbing. Seriously, don't mess with your fish. After two to three minutes, wiggle each piece back and forth to make sure it is willing to release and take a peek at the color. If the fish doesn't want to release, cook it another 30 seconds and try again. When flipping the fish, tilt the pan to lubricate the space where the fish will go. Your total estimated cooking time should be about 6 minutes, 
per inch of thickness, roughly three minutes per side. And here is my second secret for juicy fish. Take it off the heat when it's still pretty raw inside. It will continue to cook as it rests and swordfish is completely unforgiving of overcooking. When I'm cooking swordfish on the second side, doneness trumps the color. If it's done, I remove it to the plate even if the second side isn't too brown yet. Swordfish doesn't flake, so to test it for doneness, we need to make a little cut. The first few times, or if you're trying to show the inside to the camera, make a big cut. See how the center looks completely raw? Put it back together and let it rest for five minutes. Or better yet, plop it right into the skillet with the warm sauce. This way, all its juices will mix with tomatoes. Now that the fish rested, it's opaque all the way through, but so beautifully juicy. Let me get some sauce and juice on my piece. Now, pop open a bottle of rosé and I have a perfect Provencal meal for you. Start with a lovely green salad, followed by swordfish with sautéed green beans. Finish with an apricot tart. And that, my friends, is joie de vivre. For more delightful fish dishes, don't forget to subscribe to Helen's Kitchen channel. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in my One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish class.